Section 7.4 is on page 533, talks about integrals, algebraic functions by partial fractions. First, we need to review some algebra really quick. If I was to add those two fractions, I'll get a common denominator. That would be 3x plus 3 plus 5x minus 10. And that would be... Uh, Eight x minus seven over x minus two into x plus one. The deal is, if I want to integrate this, I don't know how to integrate that. But if I can go from left to right, decomposition is taking the fraction and figuring out where it came from. Note, if I want to integrate this, which I can do. If I could figure out where it came from, each of those is a natural log. This is 3, the natural log of absolute value of x minus 2, and this is 5 times the natural log of absolute value of x plus 1. So, the problem here is not really calculus, it's algebra. How quickly can you go back? And I'm going to go over that with you. I need you to know that a constant is normally the find by a b or c a linear equation is a x plus b and a quadratic is a x squared plus b x plus c on the first set of problems without write out the form of the partial fraction decomposition do not determine the numerical value of the coefficients so they're saying do not solve just write the form you need to understand a couple of things one i need all of these fractions to be proper a proper fraction is a fraction written as a over b in which a is less than b and of course we can write this here when you write it in decimal you always start with a zero point that's called proper when we translate this idea to polynomials or rationals a rational function is in proper form if the degree of the top is less than the bottom so whenever you're dealing with this, you want all of these fractions to be proper. 3 is a constant. This is linear. A linear is higher than a constant. That's allowed. So there are a few forms we need to get out of the way. First, we try to factor. If I take x minus 6, and this is on page 541. If I factor this, there are a couple of ways I can get this denominator i want the simplest i'm going to assume things came out from as simply you had only those two you added those and somehow you got this expression now to make this proper if the denominator is linear the top should be one power less and i've already agreed a power less is a constant i use the letter a since this is linear the top should be one power less. Find A and B and you're done. And that's what we're going to do for the majority of this section. I'm going to show you how to find that quickly. If I look at part B and I want to work that out, well, I'm going to alter this for now and make that actually the same thing. This doesn't factor. If I try to factor that, that wouldn't factor over R. So what I would do, I'm sorry. I'm going to make that a minus. I'm altering that. I'm making that 5b prime. I'll deal with the part that doesn't factor. It's coming up. I'll deal with all cases. The catch here when I look at this, I notice this is not a proper fraction. Why is that? The degree at the top and the bottom are equal. So what I have to do, I have to use, and this is not by choice, long division x squared over x squared is 1. You can't use synthetic because to use synthetic, the divisor must be linear. It's not. So I'll say this is x squared plus a negative x plus 6 over x squared plus x minus 6. This is x plus 3 into x minus 2. I would say this is x plus, x squared plus, not x, where did x squared come from, guys? 
it's a one plus and this is actually I'm gonna say that's x plus 3 and x minus 2. Basically, ignore the one and you just focus on this because we're gonna try to integrate that. And we're gonna try to integrate each one of those. And this will take an a and this will take a b again. Find a and b and you're done. If I look at number 4, 4, I notice this is improper because the degree of the top is bigger than the bottom. For this method to work, I need to use long division. I'm going to take x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared plus 2x minus 1 divided by x squared minus 2x plus 1. That will be x squared x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus minus 2x minus x squared plus x squared. When you subtract, you change the signs. So I could say this is x squared plus 2x over, and if I factor that, isn't that x minus 1 squared? So if I'm integrating this, this I know how to integrate. I need to worry about where does 2x over x minus 1 squared come from. So again, I'm going to assume, and this is, I'm doing the least amount of work. If you see repeated roots, you must list that that many times, no exceptions. If this was cubed, I would have listed that one more time. Since this is linear, the top is one power less. Since this is not linear, but I could take x minus 1 squared and write it as x minus 1 times x minus 1. Since this is the product of linears, it count as linear, the top will be one power less. If I look at b, this is x into x squared plus x plus 1. This doesn't factor over r. So I'll say the least amount of work I could do. Since this is linear, the top will be 1 power less. Since this is quadratic, 1 power less than quadratic is a linear equation. I already used the letter a, so bx plus c. And of course, the hard part is not what I'm doing. The hard part is finding all of these numbers, a, b, and c. If I look at number 6, this is x into x. So here, I could write it on the side. I could say this is x to the fifth plus 1 over x into x minus 1. And isn't this x squared plus 1 squared? So I'll say I'll say the reason I didn't do long division x to the 4th times x squared is x to the 6th that's bigger than that. I'm going to say x x minus 1 and repeated roots I always list them that many times so if I really work on this this is linear that's a this is linear that's b this is quadratic and since I can't write it as a product of two linear factors one power less is linear and since I can write this as x squared plus 1 times x squared plus 1 it only counts as a second order a, B, C, D, E, X plus, uh, again, the hard part is finding all of these constants. So, without further ado, here we go. Let's start doing these problems. I'd like to look at the first problem is problem number 8. I notice this is not a proper fraction, so I know what to do. three t divided by t is three that's three t plus three if you subtract you change those signs this becomes the integral of three minus five over t plus one now no need to do a u sub otherwise you're going to do a u sub on each one of those 
If that's linear, that's simply natural log of t plus 5. If there's a coefficient there, you divide by it if you take an integral, and you multiply by it if you take a derivative. So there it is. So the calculus is simple. Figuring out where this fraction comes from is the tough part, and I'm going to really tackle all of them. This is a must for Math 55. I need to figure out y over y plus 4 into 2y minus 1. Where did that come from? The least amount of work I could do is say the best case scenario, those two, a and b. Now, the book clears the fractions. You're going to do the same. If you clear the fractions, And this is where us and the book are going to differ a bit. And I'm going to show you what the book does and what you could do. So here, the book, and something you should learn because this trick I'm going to show you doesn't work all the time. So the author says, okay, this is what you do. Y equal, distribute that in. And they say y equal, get all the terms with a y, and get all the terms without a y, the constants. And they say it's really simple. The number in front of y must equal the number in front of y, so of course 2a plus b to equal 1. And the constants, since there's no constant, what does that mean? Solve this and you're done. The way we're going to do this, we're going to get to the answer a lot quicker and a lot more efficient. 85 to 90 percent of the time. We're going to say, once you clear the fractions, what's the domain? Y cannot be negative 4. Let Y equal negative 4. Then this is going to be negative 4 equal A times a negative 4 right there. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. A negative 4 right there will give you a 0. That means A is 4 ninths. And the second value you can't have is negative 1 half. Let Y equal negative 1 half. And guess what? Negative 1 half will equal a negative 1 half right there. Wait, not negative one half, positive one half, you guys. A positive one half in there will make that a zero. A positive one half right there will make this b times one half plus four. That's four and a half. That's nine halves. That means b is one ninth. And of course, if you solve this equation, you'll get the same thing. So bottom line, and I'm going to do this on every problem, not to worry if you didn't get it. On the first attempt bottom line this is really all I need if I could figure out where this came from I'm done this is 4 9 since that's linear natural log of y plus 4 plus 1 9 since that's linear natural log of 2y minus 1 if you were taking a derivative wouldn't you multiply by the 2? Since you take an antiderivative, you multiply by a half, right? So my final answer will be 4 ninth natural log of y plus 4 plus 1 18 natural log of 2y minus 1 plus 2. All right. Problem number 12 is next. Again, I'm going to do tons of those. I need to figure out where did x minus 4 over x minus 3 into x minus 2 come from. If I could figure that out, I'm done. I'm going to assume the best case scenario, a and b. I'm going to clear the fractions like the book does. But instead of proceeding and using this, the only time I would use this if I can't make those zeros, I'm going to let x equal 2, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, equal, that's a 0, 
that said b and a 2 in there 2 minus 1 is negative 1 that means b is 2 and I'm gonna let x equal what 3 put a 3 in there 3 minus 4 is negative 1 a 3 in there a times 3 minus 2 is 1 a 3 in there will make that a 0 I get a to be a negative 1 so this is the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 over x minus 3 plus 2 over x minus 2 dx that is negative natural log of absolute value of x minus 3 plus twice natural log of x minus 2 evaluated from 0 to 1 negative natural log of 2 plus twice natural log of 1 minus a negative natural log of 3 plus the twice natural log of 2. You could leave the answer like that. That's not a problem. You could combine and simplify. That is a 0 and so on and so forth. All right. Let me do one more on this video. Let me check. I'm going to tackle one more on this video before I get to the next. I'll do the rest on the next video. I have about eight problems to go. Again, how quickly can I figure out where would 1 over x plus a into x plus b come from? Basically, how quickly can I decompose this fraction? That is a over x plus a plus b over x plus b. Clear the fractions. And where would this equal 0? Let x equal negative a. I'll get 1 equal a into negative a plus b. And a negative a in there will give you a 0. So a is 1 over negative a plus b. And let x equal negative b, I'll get 1 to equal, that's a 0, b into negative b plus a. So b will equal 1 over a minus b. So this would be the integral of 1 over negative a plus b over x plus a plus 1 over a minus b over x plus b. Do remember, this is in terms of x, that is 1 over negative a plus b natural log of absolute value of x plus a, plus 1 over a minus b natural log of absolute value of x plus b, plus c. I do want to warn you, students seem to get carried away. I do want to give you a warning right here the integral of 1 over x dx equal natural log of x plus c the integral of 1 over x squared dx does not equal natural log of x squared plus c so be careful with that only 1 over x yields a natural log anything other than that doesn't work now the remainder of those I'll do in the next video.